Very exciting speakers on a really juicy topic from coding to stories. And before we get the evening started, I just wanted to uh, tell you all a little bit about. Uh, let's see, is this working here? No. No. Okay. <laughs> We're just supposed to advance the slide. Media and technology experts that are focused on the new evolution of technology. We actually uh, are, are interested in how the technology is finally catching up with the theories around the medium is the message. And so we've put together this panel tonight that I'll tell you all about in just one second. And actually, the little graphic there just showed a little bit about what transmedia is. It's putting the storyteller and the audience inside the technology and vice versa. Uh, so I'd like to, to uh, as we get started here, are we able to move this forward now? There we go. I'd like to thank some of our sponsors uh, and media sponsors, Job on TV, the Producers Guild of America, and Parasoma. And I would especially like to thank our sponsor, Swissnext. Uh, for letting us have this event in this beautiful space here tonight. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Andrea Mueller, who is going to tell you a little bit about SwissNet. Thank you. Hello, so my name is Andrea, and I'm part of the event team here at SwissNet. And I also work with the uh, university relations team. Uh, on behalf of uh, SwissNet, I'm happy to welcome you here tonight in our event space for this meetup. SwissNex is an initiative of the State Secretariat for Education and Research, connecting the dots between Switzerland and the United States, states in, uh, in the fields of science, education, art, and innovation. Apart from organizing interdisciplinary events as like this one, we also help universities, Swiss universities, to develop specific projects and partnerships here in the area. And we also host significant Swiss startups in our offices to help them enter the U.S. market. Uh, uh, tonight, we would especially want to thank uh, our speakers, David Austin, Jeff McGee, and uh, Michael Chang for being here, as well as Transmedia SF to, uh, for this opportunity to, uh, to organize this uh, event. Uh, new forms of storytelling rise more and more uh, attention nowadays, and we are happy to spread the word to our audience. Um, if you want to learn more about SwissNex San Francisco, you can visit our website, www.swissnexsanfrancisco.org, or come meet us after, event, after the event. And I wanted also to mention that uh, we are going to post a blog post very soon on Transmedia on our next Trends blog. And the address is www.nexttrends.swissnextsanfrancisco.org. Thank you. Thank you. I have to say, it is such a pleasure to be doing an event with Swissnex. Uh, these folks are helping us to raise the bar on what a meetup is. How many people have been to a meetup and somebody throws out boxes of pizza? Right? And, and these folks helped us to put out wine in real wine glasses. So we got to love working with Swissnex. They are our favorite sponsor, or one of our favorite sponsors. We love all of our sponsors. Um, but uh, but the, the, the story is what we're here to talk about tonight. And this is a really very exciting event for us. Uh, we are talking about, you know, from, from coding to storytelling, the medium to the message. And as I said earlier, we're looking at how the technology is beginning to catch up with some of the theories that, that we've been developing over the years. Um, our, our organizer for tonight's event is our own Alice Gillette. Alice is a radio journalist and uh, one of our core members of the Transmedia SF team, and she's done an incredible job of uh, organizing this event and bringing together these speakers, so I'm going to turn it over to Elise to get the party started. All right, hi everybody. I'm really happy to see you all here. Lots of friends in the audience, it's great. Um, so yeah, I, as Beth was telling, you know, Transmedia SF is all about storytelling and exploring innovative forms of storytelling. And in storytelling, I mean in Transmedia storytelling, um, there's the story and then there's so the content and there's also the technology. And we have been talking a lot about the content and how the story is always king. Um, and now today, you know, we really wanted to talk about the technology that's behind those stories. 
um, especially on the web, you know, digital um, forms of storytelling. <coughs> You, you can't really do a story if you don't know how to code and if you can't you know, power those stories with good you know, technology platforms. So we really wanted to take a look at this tonight um, and kind of you know, talk about this. If the story's king, the code is queen. So we're going to question this um, assessment tonight with our great speakers. Um, so the way the evening is going gonna, is gonna to work is that we're first going to have um, our speakers give um, a little presentation and then we're also going to have a panel discussion and you are welcome to ask questions at any time of this and so we will have tonight David Austin, Senior Director at the Media Camp of Turner Broadcasting. Hello. <laughs> So, um, Jeff McGee, Creative Director for Media and Communications. Oh, we're starting. It's alright, yeah. You can, you, can, you can stay here with me. Okay. Um, yeah. So, Jeff McGee, Creative Director for Media and Communications at the Bill Lane Center for the American West at Stanford University. Um, and then Michael Chang, Creative Technologist at the Data Art Team of Google Creative Lab. So, they will all stick around after um, the panel and you'll be able to ask them questions about what they do. Um, so, David, no, it's your turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now I'll get it. David. actually uh, worked at Apple for a long time, 17 years, and then I went and did a bunch of investing, and then I started working at Turner Broadcasting about a year ago. So I've been a year into actual media. I really worked for a technology company that became a media company, now I'm working for a media company who thinks it wants to become a technology company, and I'm trying to help that happen with some disruption. So let me talk a little bit about things. So from coding to stories, when I thought about this, I thought, well, it's not really about from coding to stories to me. What's really important is technology to stories. Because it's not just coding. To me, coding is just yet another technology that is affecting storytelling and what's going on. To me, it all goes back to the very, very beginning. We had our first initial technology we created as humans, which is talking, language. And we were able to then create stories and have people tell stories. It was really a one to one or a one to a small group, and then it would just go through on and on. That's, how, that's where storytelling came from. Originally. So I think, to me, I keep on going back to think about technologies, it's just another, nothing really changes. It's just the tools change, okay? So, and the things that have changed, what, what, what maintained a story over time was really, was it captivating, was it interesting? <coughs> did it, you know, did it resonate with the listener as well as the person telling the story? All that's really, really important. And again, language, that goes back, you know, a, a couple years. Cool. <laughs> Thank you, Swiss Nets, yeah. for giving us the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, next came, uh, again, I, I put these in my own order. You can decide if you have other technology, but you're more or less important. But to me, writing is what came up next. It was just a huge change. We created, we took this spoken language, and we added the fact the ability to actually be able to put it down and have it in a form that could be repeated. You could either you know, start on cave walls, depending upon if you believe that or not. I'll let you guys figure that out. But the fact that actually people could tell uh, with pictorials and then also writing with language and actually uh, being able to actually, on parchment and other things, be able to actually propagate, so not just one to one or one to a few, but that can propagate to many, 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 right? Which became, you, you lost the telephone tag problem, right? And you didn't know that just the story being repeated over and over, it became the fact that it could be repeated you know, consistently, which is a huge change. Um, obviously, like the first book was like in what, 868 AD, I see by my notes, my goodness, my notes. Um, and from there it continued. Obviously, then we had plays and theater, again, storytelling, all these different technologies. You think of the theater, they decided with stages and how to, 
how to set them in the round that are different. All these are technologies that were created by humans to be able to advance storytelling. 15th century, Gutenberg, amazing thing, came up with this mass printing ability. Again, it allowed it to, uh, to get that, those books and those things propagated to a much larger audience. Uh, it changed, I think, dramatically the storytelling that occurred. And it was, again, a huge technology. The same thing happens now with as technologies come up. It's like, this was just as big of a technology change then as it is now. Then we got some very interesting things. Before, that was always print, and it was like you had to look at the read. Then suddenly, there's this thing called a gramophone, and there's this thing called, uh, uh, what do you call it? A camera. You call it a camera, and you have a camera, and all of a sudden now, you don't need to learn how to read to be able to enjoy a story. You can have it played back to you. That was a huge change. That caused the masses of people who could now enjoy a story much be, uh, beyond what it was before. And that really became, uh, I think, this is where we really got into mass media. Before that, it was always, the masses were always people who were able to read, which was always a subset of the population. So really, it began the 19th century when that changed. The next huge change, I'll do this, 1902, you actually go to a theater and watch a movie. We had all this together. You had both words, because we put words up on the screen, but also had visual, it had audio, it had all these things all told consistently to the same population over and over again. A major technology change. It caused huge, uh, I mean, they had people getting upset the fact that they, they didn't want their kids to go to these things because they thought they were, you know, scary because they didn't want their kids to actually learn something. But that was, that was the, that's the thought. I mean, people are always scared of technology. It's a new thing, and it takes generations for that to change. And you see that happening now. Radios, 1930s. Same thing. The big difference here is I don't need to go to a theater anymore. I can be in my home and enjoy a story. It's an amazing transition. It suddenly became, it, it, this part of that was the fact that it actually it's broadcast, this whole concept that can go from one place to multiple. Again, I may be saying all these things, you all know all this. Anyway, I thought it was interesting when I was looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> the television in the 50s, which of course is near and dear to my heart, mainly because I like watching TV, but also because it's part of what I do. Um, what became really interesting, with, with same thing with television, is everybody said, a lot of people said they didn't want their kids to watch television, that they had warped their minds. Well, we are all now warped minds. But that's just the way the society has gone. If the culture has decided this is a perfectly fine way to do storytelling. And again, it's broadcast. You can have, the, only, the difference here that's kind of interesting um, is television started actually constricting things again. Prior to this, anybody could do um, a book. You know, you could print a book, you can go to place and get it printed and propagate it out. It always got limited. Some things have, the television was limiting it again. A small set of broadcasters controlled the airways when it's broadcast digital. It's all a change. So this is another one I think is actually a very interesting technology that changed storytelling, which is video games. First kitty video games in the early 80s. Um, I didn't have one of these, but I had a very similar old little Pong. But again, there was actually storytelling going on. There's an amazing amount of storytelling in video games. A lot of people don't realize that, don't appreciate it, but I think it changes it's changed the mindset of what it really means to do tell stories. I love when I found this picture. So this is the original Book by Web. Obviously, that was a huge impact on storytelling, mainly because it changed, it changed who controlled the media again. Instead of just being broadcast to a small set of people who control what you get to see and look at, suddenly anybody can be a publisher. Everybody, everywhere, as long as you have an internet connection. Again, that was still limited for quite a while. But what changed it again in a huge way, again, this was the early 1990s. Uh, thank you, Tim Bursley. The next thing that I think became the next huge thing that's going on now is mobile. Both mobile on phones, mobile on iPads, mobile on everything. The fact that I can be wireless anywhere. We all see it. You walk under the bus. Who is actually looking outside at their window? They're all looking at their, <laughs> at their phones. And they're seeing everything. They're able to see the full web. They're able to do all the be able to actually enjoy, people are watching movies constantly. It's television shows, you see it all the time. I think it's dramatically changed the way storytelling is. The other thing that's really interesting here is, is it's become, again, um, uh, I won't get to that quite yet. So what's next? Technology, what technology is gonna happen next? I have no idea. Is it gonna be this? Is it gonna be an immersive visual thing where you basically see your own thing? Or is it gonna be more like this? where suddenly it's actually embedded inside of our bodies. Uh, right now, the closest we have is the 
is this, which is slightly scary too. But it's happening, right? The science fiction stuff is actually happening, and the storytelling is changing. What you see, how you, how you consume the media is changing, how the media is produced. This can be different. You have, to, you, have, you have to produce media in a different way to be able to be perceived in this world. So, all that being said, what's changed? By the way, in case it wasn't clear, this is all just my opinion, and it could be full of bumps, so take it for it's I think a big change that's happening is the democratization of content creation. Uh, when I was at Apple, one of, the one of the things I worked on a lot was a lot of content creation applications. So things like Keynote are done now. Um, things like iMovie, iDVD, all these kinds where suddenly people who did not spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to be able to do things like create a movie or create a DVD or create an interesting presentation because you didn't have to do iOS things, you suddenly can do it at a much cheaper price. That democratization is amazing. That's causing the masses, again, to have the ability to actually control the story that we told them. So I think that's one big change. We also have a democratization of content distribution. It used to be, again, you had to go through a set of distributors, like a Turner Broadcasting, going on. Again, for a certain level of uh, kind of content, that's required. But as we all know, YouTube is a huge, amazing distributor of content, or Vimeo, or any of the other video, video uh, distributors, or uh, our podcasts. All these things are happening now. So it's a democratization. It's a, it's a broad audience. We all can now be both creators of content and distributors of content. We don't need to ask anybody's permission, which I think is a huge change. And there's a whole democratization happening of funding. Just beginning, as we've seen in Kickstarter and others, where something you can get funded like you couldn't ever before. It used to be only you had to go down to Silicon Valley, right? You had to go down to the, and try to get money, and that was very, very hard. And only a small number of people could do it. And all, or you go to Hollywood and you pitch your deep idea, and very small. It's the same hits business, you know. They do 100, one out of 100 hit, make a hit, but there's hundreds of thousands who'd like to be able to do something. That's actually possible in companies. So what does it mean to you, me, and everybody else? I think there's never been a better time to create a story than today. Because it's never been easier to create multimedia content. It's never been, been this easy to distribute your, your creation you create. And it's never been this easy to raise funding. But great storytelling is still extremely hard work. Because to realize it's never been easier, that doesn't mean it's easy. It's just never been easier. So now it's much easier, and oh, I think it's going to continue to get, continue to get easier, but right now it, it's pretty darn easy. The thing that's not changed is narrative's not changed. You need plots, you need characters, you need a point of view. The story, the content is critical because you can do this, all these things, you can distribute to everywhere, but again, it could be maybe a one to one or a one to a few. To actually affect many, you have to have a good story. So again, all this technology is worth nothing if people don't create amazing things. So to me, that's the most important thing. I'm going to do a little side, tell you a little about what Media Camp is, and we'll come back a little close. So Media Camp is an initiative we started at Turner Broadcasting. Um, started a little bit before I started. We, the idea was uh, to do something, <laughs> but it wasn't really clear <laughs> what. Um, but I was the first hired in San Francisco here, and I said, hey, that looks like fun, because basically the idea is, how can we turn our play in the startup space and do it in a positive way. So we coined this idea of Media Camp, which is an accelerator program. So people say, what's an accelerator? Because we may not know what an accelerator is. Um, there's different kinds of accelerators. There's technology accelerators. They're all around uh, groups of people coming together to help startups create products. There's a bunch of technology ones you probably have heard of, Y Combinator, 500 startups, tech stars. Uh, there's cloud ones, there's package goods, there's an advertising one up in Portland called Pi, which is really great. One you can they focus on advertising. What we've seen also, those are kind of more broad, right? It goes a very broad uh, accelerator. We've seen some what we call verticalization, a lot of these terms, but basically hitting healthcare only. There's a bunch of accelerators in that space. And so we look at MediaCamp as the first media focused accelerator. We aren't looking at technology that just does anything, right? We're looking at technologies that directly affect and disrupt the media business. <coughs> We just uh, finished our first accelerator class uh, about a week and a half ago. We had our demo day here. So I love this venue, it's very comfortable. Uh, we had six companies that graduated, Shoot, Matcha, Showbuck, Social Life, Social Samba, and Switch Cam. Lots of S's, we tried to get six, but we only got <laughs> So we say, we say Shoot's sort of an S, and, and we call it Matcha Smatcha every now and then. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna highlight three of these, um, but they all have an aspect of, of storytelling in them. 
they all have an aspect of uh, social in them, with a the critical aspect. I didn't even mention that the technology is affecting. I think social is sort of just a technology that's kind of a broad swath. It's just inherent in, in everything that relates in the technology space. But I want to talk about three of them real quick, just kind of give you a background kind of the kind of companies we work with. What the accelerator does is we put like 20k in each company and we spend 12 weeks with them intensely. Uh, we call it the I call it the intense dating period. And then we go on to long-term relationships. We still keep on working with them, but during the intense dating uh, time, we do workshops, we do dinner dinners with them, just we spend a lot of time with them. And then we have a big demo day, which we had a couple weeks ago, as I mentioned. Shoot's one of the companies that was, was working with us. What they provide is a, a uh, software platform, all in the cloud, uh, that basically can host all your photos or videos for you. So you don't have to build all that technology yourself, you can just leverage it. We actually leverage it at CNN. At the, both the Democratic uh, Convention and the Republican Convention, there was a, a page on CNN that had all the photos that were being created. This was de it was decided by them that all these photos are actually by uh, CNN talent. So people who worked at CNN took the pictures and posted. But the technology is independent of that. It could be, <coughs> excuse me, it could be uh, contents curated like this, or it could just be user-generated photos. Very similar, if you see up on the wall over there, there's a sh what's called a slide shoot for this event. All you do is do a Twitter, you do, you do a Twitter <coughs> to so, uh, coding stories, and it'll just show up there. So you take a picture. It's a way of curating, it's a way of telling a story in a, in a pictorial way. They also support video. I mean, really great company, really good for brands. Next company you probably heard of, and I'm gonna go get my water real quick. I'm getting froggy. Uh, this company called Social Samba. Um, I think they've been here before, or yeah, I think they're at that. So, Social Samba was involved with us for 12 weeks. They did some great stuff that you probably have heard of them. They did something called Hashtag Killer site. They were Emmy nominated. Uh, I, don't think, I don't know if they won, I don't think they won last week, unfortunately. They should have. I voted for them. Um, but um, the thing that's really interesting, been working really tightly with us, is they actually are. <coughs> We're actually doing a Falling Skies, which again is the TNT show, so again, working with parents. And, uh, I'm hoping everybody's relatively familiar with the social song, but if you're not, what it really lets you do is it lets you actually be, have a social interaction with characters from your favorite TV show, movie, book, whatever you want, and you can actually interact with them. They're doing this both on the web as well as mobile, which is stupendous. The really great thing that they're doing, they're doing Falling Skies, this actually has, they just announced that they were doing this a week ago at our demo day. It hasn't actually gone live yet, but it will soon. The really great thing is that they're actually opening up, and when they were doing a tournament, which I think is great that we're actually open to this, is wrapping up actually up to where you can actually go in and write your own story using the characters out of Falling Skies. So you as a, anybody can go in and write your own story using the characters out of Falling Skies, and it basically is a choose your own adventure in that world. So I think that's again, it's, it's a taking you know, large, large old media, and by old I don't mean me, I mean Turner, and be able to actually let people create stories out of that, which I think is really, really fun. So trying to, we're trying to change the way things work a little bit. So that's Social Samba. The third one I want to kind of mention is SwitchCam. SwitchCam is one of the other companies that uh, was in our uh, cohort, as the phrase is, for a group of our six companies that we have. Um, they're really all about allowing you to have anybody to be your, a camera crew. You can set up an event and say, hey, go take, go take video of this. Everybody does video of it, and then it allows you to actually play it back. Really interesting is where you can have in multiple angles. So you can be playing back at a wedding and be able to switch between one angle to another for different views, simultaneously all at the same time frame. Or it could be a concert where you're going back and forth. And you can go from the back row to the front row. Or it could be a skate park, and you can go from different views, of both professional or end user content. That's the idea. We're actually looking at doing a, a lot of these things like this with, with Turner properties as well. Again, with both user-generated videos as well as with uh, our professional video. But I think it's really changing the way stories can be told, both in a, a, uh, in, on the visual side, and the written side on social samba, the video side on you know. That's what MediaCamp is trying to help change, and change how uh, a media company thinks about working with a large population versus just doing only our small little group of we do everything and we don't talk to anybody yet. So we're trying to change it with media camp. So I just want to say that I think you should all go forth and, and create uh, because we can use your content. And that's all. Thank you.